So sometimes it's always hard to get, hey everybody, how are you? What's going on? Hey everybody, how are you? It's Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training with another Monday night. No, shoot, it's Tuesday night. Tuesday, it's Tuesday. night. Tuesday night Q&A. Normally we do this on every Monday night from uh, around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do our best. We try hard. Um, if you're brand new to my show, if you're brand new to my world, welcome. Thank you, Joseph. Congratulations, buddy. Oh, congratulations, congratulations, Joseph. Congratulations on the new baby. Lots of love yep. for your family. Yep. Um, if you're brand new to my world, if you're brand new to um, uh, our show, um, my name is Jeff Gellman of Solid Canine Training. I've got a uh, dog training facility up in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, thanks for the super heart um, ADK dog. Um, we specialize in aggression rehab. We specialize in behavior modification. So we work with some pretty serious dogs, serious cases. Obviously, you know, we'll help you raise a puppy, and we work with on basic obedience and off-leash obedience. Um, this show, though, the What Would Jeff Do show, um, it's – it's um, designed to help people that are struggling stopping unwanted behaviors. So it's sort of like a triage problem solving show. A lot of the answers that I get, I'm sorry, a lot of the questions that I get and the answers that I give are usually based on punishment because that's how you stop unwanted behaviors. So you hear me talk a lot about punishment. Punishment is not abuse. Um, um, I use the word punishment. I don't use the word correction. Sometimes I'll throw the word correction in there. Um, and I say it loud and proud because that's how you stop stuff. So whenever you want to teach something, you reward it. If you want to extinguish it, you would punish it. Uh, most answers um, would take me normally about 30 minutes, but you're only getting about 15 seconds or 30 seconds um, as far as your answer now. Um, but I'm um, trying to help as many people as possible. And we have a ton of social media out there. We do a ton of Facebook Live, lots of Periscope. I do a ton of Instagram and there's just a gaggle of stuff on YouTube. So come check us out. And I really appreciate it. We're seeing like we're getting a lot of new people here. So welcome. So let's just jump right in, Linda. What do we got? What's a gaggle? Gaggle is more than three. How do I stop humping with intact dogs? So humping is so, so humping is not just an intact thing. So um, uh, humping is, is female dogs do it, male dogs do it, whether they've been desexed or not. The way we stop humping is we actually, um, if you watch our, our socialization yards, um, we, you'll see our, our trainers and our kennel staff have got dressage whips. It's a dressage whip, D-R-E-S-S-A-G-E. -E. And um, they're not like walking around yielding it like this. It's actually like just right in front of them like a shepherd staff. And the way you want to stop um, humping is you would the dog would be humping you give a double tap right to the butt you can do it that way you can also do it with a remote collar to stop humping um, the only thing I don't want people to do with the remote collar is I don't want the humping stopping the humping to be the first thing they use the collar for if your dog is already collar wise and understands what the remote collar is absolutely use it but you have to make um, humping then um, you have to make humping uncomfortable um, for the dog or it will not stop it because it's self-rewarding it's self-rewarding next how do I stop my one-year-old golden doodle from barking the entire time I'm gone from home? A uh, bark tower. So again, the only way to stop something when you're not there is with a, rem a remote device. I've heard all of the everything else. Obviously, you want to have a good a dog that's exercised, obviously. But you can exercise your dog all day long. It's not going to stop barking. Never has, never will. So you use a remote collar. And don't use the citronella ones. Don't use the water ones. Don't use the air ones. Use the ones that, quote, unquote, shock. Find the right setting for it. And the way you find the right setting for it, um, I would suggest the Garmin Bark Limiter, the Garmin Bark Limiter. Don't use the A mode and don't use the V mode. Start it on level one. Make sure it's nice and snug on the it's not snug on the dog for the bark collar. Knock on the door. The dog barks, keeps barking, keeps barking, keeps barking. It's not um, um, it's not uh, the right um, level. Turn it up. If the dog barks and then goes out, but then stops barking, it's the right level. So um, the only way to stop a dog from barking when nobody is home is with a remote control device. Next. You've said if dogs in the house are fighting, you should bring massive structure into their lives. Other than structured walks together, what would this look like in the house? Well, so you, you also have to bring punishment into their lives. So, um, but everything should be st structured. So right now, um, these are not my fighting dogs, but right now I've got two of my dogs in place. So, you know, when, when, when I'm hanging out, they're hanging out. Um, they're kenneled at night, they're kenneled when you're not home. Um, everything is based on permission-based. You do a lot of permission-based stuff. Um, no free roaming, um, no snottiness, no nonsense, you know, nothing like that. So you want to make sure that um, uh, you're, 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 you're doing that. That's a lot of it. Next. Opinion on Starmark style collars as a way to start weaning the dog off prong? Um, I don't wean dogs off prong. So um, if it works for you, though, do it. My goal is not to – my goal is to um, um, leverage – my goal is to leverage um, tools to help dog owners 
get better results and have an easier life with their dog. So, but if it works for you, then do it. Next. Do you think dogs are more intelligent in any area, more so than humans? Um, I think dogs have better noses um, than us, and um, they probably can read body language better than us. Next. Uh, my dog listens only when I have the prong collar or the e-collar on. He is leash smart. How can I fix? Um, number one, you, I don't know how long you've been working with your dog. I mean, dogs do, I mean, a lot of things we can eliminate really quick and we can train really quick, but I mean, for instance, clicker training, which we do clicker training. Um, um, don't do shameless plugs on, don't use, don't use my traction. Don't use my audience for, for your own, you know. Your, your website. Um, unless you're me. Unless you're Linda. All right. That's really rude, actually. Um, so what you're going to do is, um, what you're going to do is, how long have you been working with a dog? Number two, how many repetitions have you done? Clicker training takes 4,000 repetitions for a dog to actually get it. Um, have you reached punishment mode yet? Have you reached punishment mode means, has the dog have a, had a consequence for, non, for, for, for not being able to do something? So what I want you to do is, if the dog hasn't had a consequence for not doing a known command, the dog is gonna be dogs, it's gonna be selective. Um, and then, you know, don't be in a rush to get it off. Dogs do get tower smart though. So you wanna make sure your word no has some meaning to it. Next. I play with my dog in the house when I can't get out. Good idea. Um, I, I, you know, if you've got a small breed dog and you want to play fetch, that's fine. I can't imagine playing with a dog that's 35 pounds or more inside of a home. I just can't imagine that. I don't do that. Again, if you want to do that, that's fine. Um, but, um, you know, who am I to say that, um, that, that for you, that's not the right thing. But I don't, I don't suggest that with any of my clients. Next. Thank you, Jeff and Linda. Yep. You're welcome. How do you stop dog from only wanting toys, bones, et cetera, that the other dog has? Um, what you can do is you can teach the place command and teach impulse control. So the place command is a dog, having a dog go to a dog bed. It could be a carpet square. It could be a blanket. And then give the, give whatever you want to the other dog. And the dog that doesn't have to have it, you know, it's, um, um, it could be, you know, uh, has to learn how to mind its own business. It also says it causes the other dog to not want to play. Um, okay, next. Is it wrong to have the dog sleep in the bed with you? Um, no, not at all. It all depends on, on if you've got a dog with separation anxiety and aggression. Yes, it is. And high levels of reactivity. Yes, it is. Uh, and it, we'd be careful about how we say it's wrong. What it does is it, it makes it worse and doesn't make it any better. But if your level of affection is always more than your level of structure, leadership and guidance, you're always going to struggle no matter what the thing is. But if you're kicking butt with leadership, structure and guidance, um, then you can give more, give more affection. But if you struggle with any aggression or any separation anxiety, the dog should be in the bed with you. Next. How can you train more than two dogs at a time? Um, well, start with one at a time. And then add another one, and then add another one, and then add another one. And I'm not being snarky, I mean, but that's how you would do it. So then everybody's sort of on board. Next. Mm. My dog gets excited and jumps up to lick me in the face, but always, I'm going to click on this and it's going to go haywire. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's all I have. Okay. So if your dog comes up, it, it goes up and licks you in the face and you don't want that, I've got a video on YouTube on how to stop jumping. It's relatively simple to do. It's a relatively simple thing to do. Next. Okay. What treats do you use to reward? Um, the treat doesn't matter. I mean, we use, um, we use um, uh, the dog's daily food. We use the, we use, we use the dog's daily food um, for, um, for 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 food for, for for the reward. And um, you can do that. If you want to use something higher value, you can. But if you do true food food um, training, you can use the dog's daily food. Next. Um I have a year old GSD. Mm -hmm. Is it too late to train? Oh gosh no. No. If anybody tells you that then they're they're wrong. No no you can train a dog uh, you can you can you can train a dog um uh, uh, up until its last breath to do stuff. Next. How do I know if the level is not high enough when dog e -collar, doing e-collar healing? Um, well, there could be a couple of things. You, you, if you know how to get your dog's working level and motivational level, then when there's distractions, the levels have to go higher. The dog will always tell you. Just watch the dog. Pay attention to the dog. So the dog's either confused or doesn't, you know, or is blowing you off. So, but the way we do e-collar healing is we always pair it with a leash so we can guide the dog. But if the dog keeps blowing you off, it might not be feeling the remote next.
Dog pops into commands fast as possible, runs to place, but has good duration. Slow him down or okay? Um, I'm fine with that. Next. Brought home new puppy, GSD. Two-year-old GSD is food guarding and toy guarding. How to correct? Um, well, number one, food guarding they shouldn't be doing because it takes 30 seconds. It takes 30 seconds to feed a dog. 30 seconds to a minute. Your average dog eats within about a minute, maybe two minutes tops. And I'm not talking about fast eaters. I'm just talking about dogs that are just normal dogs that are hungry. So I feed dogs twice a day and I feed them in their crates. And so there should be no guarding behavior. If there is guarding behavior, you can teach the, the out command. But don't, it sounds like you might have be doing feeding in a central area or even free feeding your dog. So I would recommend not doing that. So I would recommend feeding in the crate twice a day, put the food down, both dogs are separated, you're done. As far as toys are concerned, you know, you can teach the dog the out command, which is, um, uh, release, you know, release things out of their mouth. But whenever you bring a new dog into the into the scene, you're always going to have possibly a little bit of a little bit of friction. On the other hand, I don't want your dog stealing toys from your other dog. So you're going to have to figure out a healthy balance on that. Next. What is your preference, high food or high play drive? The dog will tell you. But the, remember, we are we are pet dog trainers. I mean, there's a huge difference. You know what I mean? I'm a pet dog trainer, so I own a dog that does sport work. But that's not what I do. That, that's not what I do. So, you know, I don't want dogs to be drivey when I'm training them. I'm training family pet dogs. I want dogs to be, I want dogs to be, you know, you know, re relaxed. So what you do, what I do is we don't use toys for training historically because you can't do enough repetitions of that command. So you can use food for training, you can use verbal praise. But the dogs we also get are really nervous and stressed prior to coming in. They won't take food. So the, the, your chances of them working up on their food drive um, um, uh, is, is important. Next. Do you have any Georgia training recommendations? No, I don't. Next. Can you use e-collar without layering with prong collar? Absolutely. Absolutely. Next. My dog knows not to bite, but sometimes when she's playing, she will nibble. Yeah. Dogs do, stop it. Um, dogs do that. Your dog should know what no means. You know what I mean? Um, your, your dog should know what the word no means. And um, there should be a punisher for that. The dog's probably doing it when it's in drive. Dogs that are in drive tend not to have. I'm um, teaching them impulse control in drive is a whole other world. Um, so honest mistake from your dog's part. Next. I got two new puppies and I'm trying to train them to go on a pad. They will wet on it, but not poop. Okay. So I don't, number one, having two, two puppies is going to be a big, huge challenge. Getting two adult dogs at the same time is a big, huge challenge. So I don't do puppy pad training. So I actually don't know how to help you. Next. I walk around Home Depot constantly, getting boring. Any suggestions where I can go for training? Um, yeah. What, what I, what I would do is, um, what I would do is go to like any public area, but if it's really cold where you are, like negative something, um, if that's if that's where your reason of questioning is, just find out who else is like, is there a Bass Pro Shop? Is there a Cabela's? Um, you might have to just bundle up, put a coat on the dog and just breathe, you know, breathe, breathe the elements. You can also do um, drills with your dog. So you can do like recall to sit, recall to place, you know, do like a little triangle thing. Um, you can do that. Teach your dog odor work, do trick training. Next. Trying the prong collar, my dog will not move when pressure is applied. How do we overcome? Um, you know, what, okay. Um, um, I, I block people because it's my show. It's a dictatorship. So when anybody, just for a frame of reference, when you plug your own blog or your own website, it's, so tacky. it's very tacky, it's very unprofessional and you get blocked that you don't go on to other people's shows and you do that. That's why you get blocked. We have rules here. It's a dictatorship. I've been doing this for 10 years. All right. I'm not the new guy on the block. So that's why. That's why. And by, and by logging in underneath another person's name and then asking why in all caps, that's also going to be the answer. All right. So what was the question? I'm sorry. Uh, trying the prong collar. My dog will not move. Okay. Got it. Your dog won't move. So what I want you to do is this. Imagine using, imagine your dog is in the middle right here and imagine you're trying to get your dog to move north. What I want you to do is then I want you to slowly go head south, east and west, bend down a little bit. You can use a little bit of like, come on, let's go. I do that. I'll do that. I'll do a little bit of baby talk 
at the beginning to get the dog to finally get moving. That's what you can do. It's, it's, I've seen, it's not, the, it's not a prong collar issue. It's a collar issue. I've seen dogs do that on martingales, flat buckle collars, head halters, and um, chest harnesses. I've seen dogs do that on every single training apparatus. They just don't want to move. So try that little um, compass move on that and, and, and don't, you know, don't get mad. Next. Um, I don't have a dog yet, but I'm here for the 411. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You're smart. Next. Is it best to use food or a toy as motivation for training? Um, all the, the, again, the, we already asked. That's a double question. That's a, that's a bot. Okay. Next. Can you give examples how dogs correct themselves? Um, yeah. I mean, dogs correct. Well, they can do a self-correction, which is they understand what they – they caught themselves in the middle of breaking a command, and they're like, oh, shoot, I'm not supposed to do that. But – Dogs correct themselves all the time. I mean, if a dog like runs into a tree and gets hurt, and dogs can do that when they're playing fetch, they don't run into that tree anymore. If a dog um, walks on a, a surface that hurts their paws, they will go around that surface. If a dog startles themselves around a certain area, they will avoid that area. And then dogs also can correct each other as well. Next. I have a blue healer that barks nonstop. We'll try the collar you recommended. Thank you. Get a bark collar. It'll work. Next. Yeah. Um, Not too many dogs don't respond to a bark collar. Next. Puppy jumps and grabs clothes of strangers. How to stop that? Yep. She is a French bulldog. So so it's annoying and it's dangerous. And you might rip some, you know, you're going to rip a clothing or you might bite a toddler. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, have the dog on a, um, a, a training collar. I'm a big advocate of tools, um, a prong collar and um, um, uh, a leash and you set it up and we have a video on that on how to stop jumping you can go to my youtube channel and it describes it step by step in very detailed how to do it and what you're doing is the way to stop jumping is this you make jumping suck that's how you stop it you make it uncomfortable for the dog there's a lot of unethical conversation out there about how to stop jumping like turn your back that's sort of like the worst thing to do is turn your back on a jumping dog um ignore the dog you don't ignore jumping dogs they won't stop tell the dog to sit you actually don't care if the dog sits or not you don't want the dog to jump so a lot of people what they're doing is they'll train like please i don't know they'll train um uh, they'll train um jump dog jumps and then they say sit and then they reward it you just trained a chain called jump sit okay next what's the biggest error owners or trainers make with dogs um there's, there's, there's tons of it. There's tons of it. Probably not training them. That's so such an open-ended question. I wouldn't know where to begin next. What is the best way to start leash training my one-year-old GSD? Um, start, start with just go to our, go to our YouTube channel. A YouTube, everything is solid canine training. All of my social media platforms are solid canine training. So go to our YouTube channel and go underneath DIY, do it yourself, and start following those, and then just dive into our social media contents. All right next. How do I get puppy to get in the water and like it? Well, we don't know if they're going to like it or not. So, <laughs> so you know, what you can do is if you have to bathe the dog, you just go. It's like, guess what? You're taking a bath today. And you pick up the dog and you put him in the bathtub. You can do that. If you want to do, if you want to take time, which a lot of us don't have time, you're like, I'm not going to take three weeks to get my dog, um, to get my dog to enjoy a bath. It's like, get in the bath right now. So what do you do? You just put him in the bath. Next. Uh, how can I get my seven month old Labrador to eat slower? Um, they make, well, you can do a couple of things. You can spread the food out on a, on a, a, a sheet pan. You can get, you know, those, um, cupcake, the cupcake pans, take food and put them in all the little cupcake things. You can do that. And then they also make some slow feeder bowls. Next. Um, I don't know if this is connected with the other one. How do I get puppy to like showers and be calm? Yeah, that's the same thing. Uh, found a balanced trainer where I live who hosts weekly dog socials. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Congratulations. That's fantastic to hear. Um, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for the compliment and the kind words. Um, it's appreciated. All your advice. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for consuming. Um, what are the best protocols inside the home? But, well, to me, I would say 90% of the time my dogs are inside the house. They're in place because... My dogs are with me a lot. So what I do is if I'm like right now, two of my dogs are in place. Um, when I was doing my social media, they were in place. When I'm reading a book, they're in place. When we're making dinner, actually they're outside, like, you know, enjoying their, their, their out, they have an outside yard. So pretty much hanging out, doing nothing. 
That's what my dogs do. Now, if I go to my training center, we can do our trick training there. We can do agility equipment there. We can do um, some drivey stuff there. Um, I play chuck it with my dogs a couple of times a day. And then eight months out of the year, my dogs go swimming three to four times a day because we've got an in-ground pool here and then a pool at the training center. So, but inside, my dogs are doing a lot of nothing. So, next. Dog won't take food when training sometimes, but I know that yep. he has not eaten that day. Yep. Keep training? Well, dogs can go... 30 days without food. So just because they didn't eat breakfast, that doesn't mean they're going to eat. Yes, you have to keep training. If you want to do a true food training protocol, you only feed through training. A dog can you can a dog can miss a days of a day of food. A dog can miss two days of food. A dog can go a week without food. Remember, you're not starving the dog. Here's your food. It's right here in my hand. Eventually the dog will take it. If you want to do food training, that's how you would do it. Next. Sometimes dog refuses to sit at threshold, even when pulling up on prong while pushing down on rear. So, I mean, then if the dog, if the dog, um, uh, uh, if the dog knows a known command, then there has to be a punisher for non-compliance or else you will have an unreliable dog. So you shouldn't, at that point, you don't be doing pulling, you would do a quick pop or a leash correction for that. And do drills, do drills. Like you would walk, walk, you know, walk five feet, come to a stop, sit five feet, stop, next. How would you train a dog to not be scared of grates? Well, we've done that a lot. We actually just like, we literally just let's go and we walk over the grate. You can do it with a clicker and food if you want to. To me, um, I will just go, we're walking over the grate today. I've done it numerous times. It works every single time. Being in New England where we are up on the east side of Providence, we've got fire escapes. We've got then the flat parts of the deck of the fire escape, which is all grating. So Walking up fire escape steps, a lot of dogs don't like that. Number one, there's no kick plate, and they can see right through them. So it freaks out a lot of dogs, but it's a really great skill to work. If you live in any major city with subways, the grates that are on the sidewalks over the subways, you can do that as well. The only time you want to be super careful is when it's, if you're in Las Vegas in August, you don't want to have your dog walk over metal. You know, next. Uh, Vancouver, Canada here, following. Awesome. I'll be in um, Kelowna. Coming up, go to rvdogtrainer.com, rvdogtrainer.com. I've got two seminars coming up in Canada. Next. When my dog barks in the house, I say, thank you, go to his spot and redirect, okay? Well, if you truly mean thank you, and um, if you don't mind one or two barking, which I don't, you know, I don't, that's fine. Um, but you're not, that's not a redirection. If you're, I, I don't like to do redirection. So to me, it sounds like you're just, Telling your dog, hey, thanks for barking once or twice. Now knock it off and go to your spot. That sounds that sounds proper to me. Next. How can you stop a nonstop hungry dog always standing next to your plate? Well, that's rude behavior on your dog's part. That's why you asked the question. So you 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 teach your dog the you can teach your dog the out command, which literally means like get out of here. Like literally, like get out of my space. How do you do that with? You do it with a punisher. You do you bonk a dog, which is a towel. Um, bottom line, you can use a remote collar. You can have your or be pro. You can be proactive and have your dogs go to place. So right now, like the dogs can't be bothering us. So it's one of the more easier things to do. Um, a dog understands it. Um, stopping a dog from doing something is pretty simple to do. Now, if you want to give them something else to do, that's where it takes a little bit more time, like place or down or things like that. So that that's what that's what I would do. But it's dangerous. A dog could you know a dog can nip you. Um, um, a dog can eat food that's poisonous to them. Um, so it's not a good idea to have your dog around the kitchen table. Plus, they get fat. So next. Do you think holding small dogs like babies when they're pups causes problems later on? Um, well, when you say pup, we're talking under 16 weeks old. I, that's one of the things you do actually when you pick out a puppy and breeder should be doing prior to the eight week old. Um, they start that at two to three days, two to three days old actually. We'll hold them upside down. They'll do a lot of different sensory stuff on hot and cold surfaces, on surfaces that move, on uneven objects. They'll hold them up in the air. Um, um, so, you know, uh, it's if you're doing it, if you're actually doing it to baby the dog, it's probably not the best mindset to have for dog rearing. But if you're doing it to to build confidence in the dog eventually, yes, it's a good idea. But um, and if it's a Chihuahua, freaking carry it around in the damn handbag for all I care. But it just better not bark too much and bite. Next. Uh, do you do any less than a three week board and train for a non aggressive dog? Um, we don't. We do a um, we do one on one. We do one on one sessions. Um, we can do that. 
Um, and then if you've already gone through our program and say you're traveling for a little bit, we'll do like, yeah, we'll do, we'll do it. But right off the, right off the bat, most dogs um, need at least three weeks, at least three weeks. Some dogs, we've got dogs that like, they're just, it takes them a week just to get acclimated sometimes, just get acclimated. Um, we've got other dogs that, you know, that when you stop some of the bad behaviors, you get a lot of new nonsense that comes out. So we see that a lot. Next. Best way to stop separation anxiety at work and home? Well, I've got a um, I've got a video uh, that's that's um, if you do it 100%, um, um, it's very very accurate um, on how it works. So go to my YouTube channel on separation anxiety and um, watch that video. So start by watching that video and then None. and then and then work and then work backwards and then work backwards from that. So do everything that the video says and then come on and see what we're doing next. She has to go outside. Kira, nine. Um, Thoughts? What is this? I have a 70 pound what? So yeah, if you have, 70 pound, you have a 70 pound dog and the prong collar keeps popping off, I would go to a three millimeter. The 225 is too small. So go to a three millimeter. Next. Um, when using no then correction, can I eventually just use no once behavior has stopped as a warning? No. Come up with another word. So your word no, and we all make the mistake. It's no big deal. I've done it. I do it as well. But when you use the word no, you want to destroy it. So whenever you say the word no, there should be a, a consequence following it. So if you want to just do a warning, just change it to like, eh, eh, or, you know, anything else. Next. Um, now, femur bones are fine. Just don't cook them. Just don't cook them. No cook bones. Raw bones. Next. Can dog be taught to respect meek new kennel worker that hasn't controlled dog? If you if you have a meek new kennel worker, you probably want to think about um, um, finding a new kennel worker. And that's not, you know, I'm not trying to be mean here, but if you've got challenging dogs and you have a and you have a weak energy, so not necessarily meek, but weak energy, someone's gonna get bit, or you're gonna have a dog fight. You're gonna have a dog fight. You can have somebody that's quiet. Like our staff is quiet when they work dogs in the kennels. There's no yelling. There's no screaming. There's no, you know, dominant posturing, but it's more about energy. So if somebody is, is got soft energy, they're going to get in trouble. You're going to have a dog fight. They're going to get bit. Um, so they need to handle lots and lots of dogs. Just be super, super careful. Super careful. Next. Hi. Great to see you guys again. Awesome. Linda, you look marvelous. Yeah, she, she always looks fantastic. Hope and Beth. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Yeah, we had a wonderful dinner last night. She looked just fantastic. Thank you. Yep, next. Um, new kennel worker my, equals my dog get, gets kicked out of vet daycare. She attended five weeks for four months. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I know. Next. Correct for whining on place. Think I'm nagging her maybe. She won't relax yet. Yeah, I mean, some dogs, went, like right now, if you've been following us on social media um, uh, forever, but if you just started tuning in on social media right now, we've got a lot of nervous, fearful dogs right now. We've got a bunch of dogs that are just so, so high strung and are really struggling with, they, they came to us struggling with a lot of anxiety, a lot of nervousness, a lot of fear. Um, so we struggle too. You know, we struggle too. Um, there's some really deep seated um, behaviors that a lot of these dogs, um, that a lot of these dogs, you know, have. Um, but you might be underwhelming her. So you might be underwhelming the dog by just nagging with just small corrections instead of one good whammy that just says, you know what, just cut it out. Like we're all tired of whining. Because remember, whining is also the dog's mental cycling of its mind too. Next. Oopsie daisy here. Okay, any suggestions on the best tech techniques for brushing my dog? Uh, brushing your dog's teeth. You really don't have to brush your dog's teeth if you do that. That's the, I think with the femur bone. Just do femur bones. Just do femur bones. Then it'll be self doing that. I also feed my dog raw chicken quarters. So next. Um, Next. Yeah. Uh, when I tap, doesn't uh, something about hearts? Not giving hearts. You're not giving hearts. Just tap your screen. I could be you. I don't know. Maybe reboot. Maybe log off. Log back on. If you can't tap your screen, if you can't give hearts, people. If you want to know how to give hearts, you actually just tap your screen. And if you want to give super hearts, you got to buy the super hearts from the app store. Intense staring at cats and squirrels in heel, high corrections, work for a moment, go higher. If it only works for a moment and the dog keeps going back to it, you got to go higher. Yeah. Don't worry about what number it is. 
Pay attention to the dog. Yeah, next. Hmm. Uh, what do you think about Malinois? Uh, I think Malinois are great dogs, but they shouldn't be family pets for most people. I think right now the shelters are getting filled up with Malinois. I think I think if you're a um, if you're a highly active owner, a Malinois could be a great dog. Um, if you're obviously I, uh, historically Malinois go to sport dog people to um, which includes personal protection, tracking, odor work. And things like that. If you want to do a ton of trick training, things like that. If you want to do high level obedience competition, even if you want to compete the dog in just higher level obedience, um, you know, flashier stuff, they're great dogs. But for your average family pet, a male is going to be just, uh, 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 it's going to be a challenge for you. It's going to be a challenge for you. Um, I've only met two low key males. And when I mean low key, they were like still like drivey, but they were not quite as drivey as your average male. Um, if a small ch dog lunges at a child, at a one-year-old child, but doesn't bite them, what should be done? Um, what, what? Well, it's going to be if it's in the same family. What you need to do is I'm going to be doing a, a baby proofing video at, at some point, um, soon actually, probably the next thirty days. A professionally, you know, filmed one. I've got a couple of videos coming out that are going to be professionally done. Um, what you want to do is number one, the dog should know the place command that the baby. Um, the baby should know the the the, the no command, and um, I'm a big advocate of dogs existing around um, um, ex existing around um, uh, children, but not necessarily interacting with children. So existing is good, but interacting is not good. Um, it, a lot of dogs don't like the pressure of a young child or something or anybody coming towards them and they know they can't get away. So what do they do is they snap. Snapping is, 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 is usually a warning. It's not as bad as a bite. So, um, you know, uh, obviously that's gotta be stopped, but more advocate for the dog. Think about the dog next. Not trying to be funny. Poodle likes young blondes. Is that possible? Um, if you like young blondes, and when we're talking young, we're not talking about 18 and under, um, I think it would be great for you, um, I, especially if you're single and that's your, that's your, what you like. Um, um, you know, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the, I, I don't know. I, you know, I know you're not trying to be funny, but I don't, I don't have a good answer for that. Next. My dog squirts all the time when he's scared, happy, excited all the time. What do I do? That's hard. You know, I'd rather work with a biting dog than a, than a, than an excited peeing dog when you first of all check for a uti which it probably isn't it's probably um it's probably excitement it's probably an excitement um thing so what do you have to do with excitement right now no excitement literally very very minimal words with a dog everything is monotonous everything is slow everything is bland as soon as you get home you know take the dog out to go to the potty no high-pitched voices no all excited stuff get yourself into a new routine of calmness with the dog you can still take the dog for walks you can still play chucky you can still play frisbee you can still take the dog running don't get me wrong but i want you know if a dog you know um has excitement pee outside it's not so bad inside it's gonna destroy your home next my neighbor's dog barks all the time. I want to throw a brick at it. It's so bad. Yep. What's my options? So please don't, don't do that. So please don't do, do that. Um, if your neighbor is not home, you can always say, hey, I don't know if you knew, but your dog's barking all day. And maybe you didn't know about it. Um, have you heard about bark collars? In my neighborhood, you don't say stuff to neighbors. You just keep your mouth shut. Um, you don't like tell neighbors what to do. Um, you can always call animal control. Most, most cities have nuisance ordinances. Um, if a dog barks, I think for more than 10 minutes or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, try to, try to, you know, um, uh, try to, you know, try to do it. Am I the one with a big ego? Yeah, I am. That's me. Jeff Gelman, solid canine training. Mm, it's yep. huge. Yep. It's, 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 it, most dog trainers do have big egos. You know, there you go. Next. Okay. This next message is, says, I, at, I'm here for Jeff. Hey, Linda, tell Jeff we are looking forward to meeting him in Kelowna. Oh, cool. I'll see you. Awesome. You just told him. <laughs> you just, good. You just told good. Him. Awesome. I'll see you in Kelowna. I'm looking forward to it. I've never been, um, I've never been, I've never been there. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Next. What do you think of dachshunds? Um, I think doc, I mean, I mean, I, I don't dislike any breed of dog. Um, dachshunds, you got to watch out for number one. Um, please don't have them overweight and you got to watch out for their spines. You know what I mean? You have to watch out for their spines. That's the mm. thing. That's the thing. So jumping off of things can injure them a lot. Um, so next.
That's what Dog barks at cars all the time when they drive around the neighborhood. How to train to bark less. Um, what, and you have to go up a little bit. You must know, have to, yeah. So, um, so what you're going to do is if, if your dog is in the house, you get a bark collar. If you're out on walks, you would correct your dog while you're walking your dog. But if you're, um, um, if you're, you know, you, you've got to do um, uh, uh, some sort of punishment device, which is going to be a bark collar. You can use a remote collar as a punisher. The only way to stop an unwanted behavior is through is through is through punishment. So um, punishment is not abuse. Punishment lasts for one or two seconds. Usually, on a bark collar, lasts for a tenth of a second. It's just boom, it's quick. Um, it's uncomfortable. The dog goes, "Oh, barking, uncomfortable. Barking, uncomfortable. I get it. I'll stop doing it." You know. Next. Where will your professional video be put up? Um, I'll post something up on Facebook, and we'll have a we separate website for it. You know, there'll be a link on my website. Um, it'll be, um, seven days to sanity is one of my videos that I'll be producing. It's called seven days to sanity, how to turn your dog around in a week. That doesn't mean your dog's going to be awfully trained. That doesn't mean your dog's going to be fully trained, but it's literally how to get your sanity back, um, in, in, in a week. Next. I have a pit boxer mix. Great family dog. Not good with very young kids. That's it. Okay. okay. Next. Um, Going to begin fostering and training dogs for a local shelter. Any extra advice? I mean, you know, so you're hopefully you're only doing it for experience. Um, unless because if as soon as that dog goes back to the shelter, all the training goes away. So if you're if you're do if you want to do it, it's a great idea for you to get experience handling as numerous dogs with numerous problems. It's also good for you to have a dog that um, then maybe can go from you um, uh, to um, a home and you can train the owners, but if the dog's going back for the shelter in a way that the, it's, it, it, the dog's not going to change the dogs, the dog will regress almost immediately because there's no consistency in shelters. Next. What do you know about Louisiana Catahoula leopard dogs? Um, uh, a lot of the dogs that come from down South, um, um, what they need is they need a lot of, it's, it's almost like a working breed dog. So it's a working breed dog. A lot of those dogs, um, are used to being outside a lot. Um, so, but we train those dogs up. Um, we like to give them a task, give them a job. It could be anything from just like playing chuck it or fetch or frisbee or, um, doing some tasks. Um, a lot of these dogs that are, that are Southern breed dogs, and we're seeing a lot of them come up into New England into living in cities. We are seeing them struggle a lot. We're seeing them struggle a lot. Um, we're seeing a lot of, you know, nervousness, anxiety, reactivity. Um, but if you've got, Good dog. It's probably it might not be a good first time dog. Might not be good for a first time dog. Next. Um, your answer was very helpful. Awesome. Um, female Frenchie, almost a year, plays too rough. Okay. So um, if you want if you want to slow it down, again, a dressage whip is great for that. Remote cower is great for that as well. Um, I'm not a big advocate of dogs playing with unknown dogs. So I've talked about that um, a lot. I'm a big advocate of socialization. Socialization is like a cocktail party. It's not a big mosh pit. It's not a big mosh pit. So um, I, 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 if you want to stop rough play, there has to be a punisher, which could be a little bit of a swat to the butt. Um, we show that we show our work all the time at socialization, as well as you could have um, 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 uh, a remote collar correction next. Um. How long do you do the pressure on, pressure off protocol when layering the remote with the prong? Um, usually um, um, just one or two days tops. And then we go right to, you know, whatever, uh, what our next step, which would be, you know, a leash pop um, or um, remote collar. Next. My dog is a mix of Aussie Shepherd and D Dalmatian. Yep. Okay. He has separation anxiety. How to help with this. So again, I've got a video on YouTube. So watch my video on YouTube. Um, start with that and then do everything I say in that video and then come back to the show and ask the question because that's a really good start. It's a really good start. So people fix separation anxiety by watching our free videos. They, they do it all the time. Next. How do you feel about Australian shepherds? I, I feel like, guys, don't ask me about breeds, like, because I feel fine about them. I feel fine about them. Um, I don't know quite how to answer a question like that, to be honest with you. Um, it's like, they're, they're fine. I mean, they can be great dogs or they can be not great dogs. You know, I guess on some, I'll give you more specific, like a Malinois, I'm pretty outspoken about bulldogs. If you live in Las Vegas, like why do you have a bulldog? Um, if you have one, don't be offended, but it's like, they can't breathe. It's, they don't like hot cl climates, you know, next. 
I have a golden retriever, Chesapeake Bay retriever cross. What do you feel about force fetch? Um, so um, um, I don't train force fetch. Um, I have no problem with force fetch at all. And I, and I know how it's trained. If you don't know how it's trained, just go to a video on force fetch. You can do it with a remote power, do it with an ear pinching, with a toe, toe pinch. Um, I have no problem with, um, 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 I have no problem with force fetch at all. Um, you can do it with a clicker and food. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to train forced fetch. Um, if people don't know what that means, it's just, it's, it's popular in the sport world as far as like hunting dogs. Um, what you're doing is you're training the dog to actually go pick something up, bring it back and not let go of it. So next. If there's anything that's breed specific, like what do you think of this? Just don't answer those. Don't ask those questions. Is there a right age to start letting people interact with your dog? So what I do is the, 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 the bigger question is when do you stop, which is what I do. So up until six months of age, what I will do is I will go to places where I actually want people to interact with my dog. Living in Providence, which is a multi multicultural city, um, it's really really great. And having a um, lot, having a lot of universities by us. Um, uh, it's really, really great. So I'll actually have a dog and I'll be like, Hey, can you come and pet my dog? Can you come and pet my dog? Can you come and pet my dog? Um, I'll have rules for it. Like don't put your face in the dog's face. Um, don't do stuff like that. Um, I want my dog to stay into a sit and I'll tell the people if my dog breaks the sit, I'm going to put my dog back into a sit. You sort of take the fun out of it with people. Um, but that, you know, that's what I'll do. But once my dogs are socialized with humans, I'll do another check in in about a year. A lot of times, um, uh, uh, a year, Dogs change a lot. We see a lot of dogs are changing between a year and 15 months. So you might want to do a check-in back then to make sure your dog all of a sudden didn't like go all of a sudden. It's like, ooh, strangers, I go after you. So some people will go up until 15 months. Um, but I want dogs to, excuse me, eventually ignore people. That's my goal. Next. I'm always terrified of socializing a small breed puppy with other dogs. Well, you probably should. I'd be terrified too. I'd be terrified too. So what I would do is, you know, um, you can find other smaller breed. If you go up onto like meetup, meetup.com, or if you go to a doggy daycare, maybe um, um, that's got small, small groups, um, um, uh, uh, um, you can, you can find that. So, so Hiram, I'll give you your, your 30 seconds here. I'm not, I'm not like blocking people with real questions. I'm blocking trolls. You'll never see me block a person that has a real question. You'll never see me block a person with a real question. So, but you just called me a fag. So next time you pop up, I'm gonna block you. So like, if you, if you listen to this content, you'll see that I'm really, really helpful, but I just don't stand for nonsense. I've also been doing this for a really long time. Um, so you asked about a Catahoula leopard dog. Do you think they're good for home use? Well, I didn't maybe get to your question yet, but you called me a fag. So you're never going to know. Like, you'll never know. I'm giving you, guys, like, I'm giving you free information. Like, free. Like, it's not bad for free stuff, right? Come on now. If you don't like it, it's 300 bucks an hour. You can Skype with me and I'll let you call it. You can sit there and call me a fag for an hour. It's like, I'll just be like, yeah, sure. It's like, yeah, I got my 300 bucks. Next. Anyway, um, <laughs> I mm, only experience as of now plan to make videos so someone may adopt directly from my home. Awesome. That That's is. a great idea. That's about going to the shelters. Uh, great idea. Thank you. Kudos. Keep doing it. Next. Um, trainer suggested putting two dogs that don't get along and create side by side. Sounds crazy. Help. Well, it, it does sound crazy, but there's probably, mo hopefully there's more to it than that. Hopefully there's more to it than that. What I would do is I would actually probably have a little bit of space between the two. Um, because I don't want any crate nonsense. So it's, there's going to be two dogs that don't get together. There's always going to be a little bit more than that. But, you know, um, eventually, um, yeah, you'd be, be fine if they were next to each other. We have dogs that don't get along next to each other. But we're trainers. So, I mean, we've got a little bit more of a skill set. Um, but for your average home use, let's put a little bit of space in between. I'm getting a couple of questions about nail cutting and grooming. I don't know a lot about that. So um, as far as, like, nail cutting and grooming, you know, um, what, what, what I would do is I'd go onto YouTube, Google it. There's some people out there that have got in- incredible mm. videos, like really, really good videos on, you know, nail cutting and grooming and even dogs that like, they don't like it. They don't like it. They're aggressive. They like, it's hard to do. They yell and they scream. So 
you know, that's, that's, that's what I would do. I'm, I'm just not the, I'm not the nutrition guy. I'm not the medical guy. I'm not the grooming guy. So, you know, I'm the guy with a big ego right next. <laughs> Huge. Yep. How long is too long for walking a dog and working on heel? You know, I mean, you know, I, chances are you're not doing it too long. I mean, if you took a four week, I'm four week, a four month old dog and you walked it 10 miles, you're probably over walking the dog. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, your average person walks for about 30 minutes to an hour. So you're doing anywhere from, you know, a mile to probably three miles, which is which is probably not too much for your average dog. In the hot weather, you've got to really watch out for like your, you know, your smushy face dogs. But I don't think most people are walking their dog too much. So I probably wouldn't worry about it. Next. GSD is very reactive when someone comes to the door and is very strong to handle with prong and e-collar. So um, you've got so you've got an arousal issue. So you have an arousal issue. The first thing you want to do is, um, um, you know, eliminate the arousal. You want to eliminate the arousal. How do you do that? So if you can, if it's not working with a remote collar or prong collar, the first way before you can actually have a conversation with your dog is um, you have to eliminate the arousal. So I would use a bonker. Bonker is a wrapped up towel. I'm looking over here for, I thought I had one. It's a wrapped up towel. And what you do is you'll say no, and you throw the towel. Yes, I'm telling you to throw a towel at your large dog. Um, if you'll, you, you snap your dog out of that. Then you can start teaching your dog something. But when a dog is barking and lunging and jumping at the door, don't tell your dog what to do other than no, other than no. Also, you might be underwhelming your dog with your tools. Remember the tools only work if what's behind it has got value. So a lot of people I find underwhelm their dog. They underwhelm their dog. Next. Do you really feel that dogs pick up on our anxiety? Yeah, um, they pick up on our on our energy, absolutely. They pick up a lot on our facial expressions and our body language. And a dog knows when somebody has cancer. A dog knows when a gram of heroin is in three pounds of coffee beans. A dog knows when someone's about to have a diabetic um, uh, seizure. I got a good feeling that um, I got a good feeling that um, uh, a dog knows um, when uh, you're, you're you're nervous. Next. How far do you let puppies fight? Um, no, I don't let them fight at all, but play rough. Um, you know, um, uh, I, I got no problem with rough play at all, as long as you get them to stop it, um, you know, immediately. So if you're going to let dogs play rough, you better be able to get dogs to be calm. Next. My dog ends up on my pillow at night and growls when I ask him to move. So your dog should be in a crate. Crate your dog at night. You're going to get bit. You're going to get bit. So please let's stop that today. All right. So create your dog at night. Don't allow your dog up on the bed. That's a great example. Someone said, you know, it's okay to sleep with your dog. For you, it's not okay for you to sleep with your dog. So no dog should be growling um, um, uh, at, a, at a human, especially in the in the bed. It's like, mm -hmm. no way. That's how we get, that's how we get face bites. That's how we get bites. So, you know, we get a lot of, um, um, you know, you know, we've been featured next. Mm -hmm. Next. Uh, best training exercise to turn off excitement. Um, probably um, to just get a to, to, for to get rid of arousal is going to be what you're going to want to do. So to to eliminate arousal, what you're going to do is you're going to um, use a bonker or a punisher to eliminate arousal. Remember, a lot of times people say, "Oh, you're getting rid of the drive of the dog. You're getting rid of the drive of the dog." It's like you're not getting rid of the drive. So there's a difference between arousal and high drive. I own two very high drive dogs, but when they're in my house, I don't want them all ramped up. I want them to, um, uh, I want them to be calm. Yeah, we just saw we were featured. Yeah, Periscope just threw Super. threw me a bone on that one. So <laughs> so welcome to all the new people here. We've been on we've been on for about an hour already. So you're missing a lot of the show. We're on the tail end of the show. Um, if you're just tuning in, my name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training and I'm a dog trainer, business owner um, in, in Providence, Rhode Island. And we specialize in aggression, rehab and behavior modification. Um, and then I travel the world doing dog training seminars and you can go to rvdogtrainer.com, rvdogtrainer.com. But all my links are up in my up in my bio. So welcome to all the wonderful new, new new people that are here. And we're winding the show down. So you might we might not get to your questions. So I apologize. But I am on every week. Next. Female humping one of one particular person and anxiety. Should he leave? The human? 
Mm. No, the human shouldn't leave at all. The human shouldn't leave at all. I think I think the dog needs to learn how to not hump. And I answered that question. Um, I answered that question earlier on how to stop dogs from humping, and it's got to be a, through a correction. But um, um, you know, definitely don't have that person leave next. One-year-old golden doodle is mouthy. Always tries to get attention using mouth and teeth. Yeah, a lot of dogs do that, so that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable at all. So you can do a couple of things. Number one, the dog needs to learn that using its mouth unacceptably is um, not. It's, it's not acceptable. It's unacceptable. It's, un it's, un it's unacceptable. <laughs> so believe it or not, if a dog puts its mouth on me, and if you're not, if you're brand new, I talk about punishment a lot. Punishment is not abuse. The only way to stop an unwanted behavior is through a is through a punisher. It's a one to two second moment of discomfort for the dog. Um, uh, so you would use a bonker a bonker is a wrapped up towel you would say the word no it's really important whenever you're about to deliver a punisher to a dog you always say the word no first and then you deliver the punisher never say no at the exact same time you're doing the punishment it's got to be no and then there's a little bit of a latency period of one second or two seconds and then you deliver the punisher and it's the same with yes as well it makes both yes and no way more effective it's that anticipation um, that yes a reward is coming in oh shit a punisher is coming because i did the wrong thing it really helps the dogs process the information that you're teaching them um, um, much much better much much quicker next five-month-old puppy scared of almost everything so all of a sudden, how to help? Is it due to age? Um, no, we, we, we get a lot of nervous dogs. We get a lot of nervous dogs. It could be a lot of things. It could be lack of socialization, lack of exposure. It could be it could be genetics. Um, usually it's lack of socialization, lack of exposure to environmentals. What are environmentals? Just name it. Literally a leaf blowing, plastic bags moving. We have we deal with dogs that are afraid of literally a leaf blowing by um, plastic bags. So what you're going to do is what I would do is do you want to do all interior work first? interior work um, um, so um, what you're going to do is um, you want to do everything inside and i would do all clicker food protocols do you do all clicker food protocols and all your basic commands and a lot of your, on your confidence building skills and a lot of your confidence building skills that's what you're going to do next uh how how long should I train heal and recall by dialing up before going to correction mode? So on recall, if your dog, in order for your dog to understand recall, I still talk a lot about shock collars. Still talk a lot about them every day, every day. I'm, I'm probably one of the the only people out there that talk about them on a daily basis and how wonderful they are. So, um, so um, as far as the on recall training. You don't want to go to a punishment level on recall until the dog understands recall. So um, what you want to do is you want to do a lot of reps on recall. You want to do short distances, long distances. You want to do them on a long line. And then eventually, though, you have to proof it because what happens when your dog sees a squirrel, a dog, um, a deer, you know, any, anything. So what you're going to do is um, – so. Uh, uh, what, what you're going to do is you eventually though to the point when you're going to go to a punishment level on the remote collar for non for not coming back to you make sure it's on a leash so it understands that you know i don't want to drive you away from me i want you to come back to me next uh i have a two-year-old tricolor collie love her she's great i have a question ask your question okay go ahead next <laughs> Uh, sometimes my dog is reactive to people who carry objects. Can you explain his thinking? Thanks. Say that one more time. Sometimes. Oh, I reactive to people. It probably just startles the dog. So what I would do is this. What I would do is I would do a clicker protocol, clicker food protocol, and I would set it up. So you've got to get a bunch of your buddies together, or you can just get a bunch of your buddies together at first, have them carry a bunch of objects, make sure your dog has been understands what the clicker is. So we can go to our FAQ section on our website, which is solidcaninetraining.com, and you can learn how to make sure you properly get your dog to understand what a clicker is. Then what you're going to do is you start out with different someone carrying an object. And if the dog's not reactive, you would click and reward, click and reward, click and reward. And you keep doing that. If the dog is reactive, you have to have a punisher. There has to be a punisher. So if there's no punisher, then the dog will just Lack of a reward is not a good enough thing to stop an unwanted behavior. You just can't do that. So then the dog goes, I get it. So if I'm reactive, it sucked for a second. If I'm non-reactive, ooh, good things happen. Then what you would do is um, you'd go out, you'd go outside into the real world, and then you would do the exact same things. Next. Um, what's the biggest reason why two dogs don't get along? Um, probably because nobody told them not to. Next. Okay. How do you, okay, that one's done. What adjustments to training would you recommend for stubborn dogs? Um, stubborn, stubborn dogs, you got to find a motivator. You got to find a motivator. Dogs always have a motivator. So food is a powerful motivator. So um, stubborn dog also means lack of communication. 
Um, um, you might be overwhelming the dog with information. Um, so what I would what I would do is um, I would use the dog's food drive. That's what I would do. I would tap into the dog's food drive if I had a stubborn dog, which pretty much means you're working for all your food. You're working for all your food. Next. Would my two-year-old collie make a search and rescue dog? Oh, I have no idea. You know, I have, I have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I don't teach search and rescue dogs, so I, I don't know what would make a good search and rescue dog. So I would, I would, I would look for info, that information online and, and trying to find a local search and rescue club, um, you know, close to you. Next. Um, I have a Yorkie. What's the best way to socialize her with people? She gets very excited around people. Well, well, so she sounds like she's pretty socialized already because she's so excited. So again, um, you know, what, what I would do is it's easy for dogs to be excited around people. It's harder for them to be calm around people. Um, so what you're going to do is you need to start getting your dog to be calm. You need to know how to eliminate your dog's arousal. So a lot of times people think, oh, my dog is happy to see everybody. But, but imagine if that Yorkie was a Rottweiler. You know, so you wouldn't want that. Which is why you're asking the question. So we want your dog to learn how to um, exist around humans. So let's get your dog to exist around humans. And and the way you would do that is start teaching your dog a proper heel next to you. Um, if the dog gets excited, um, um, if the dog gets excited, then what you're going to do is you're going to um, uh, uh, correct that. So you can use a prong collar even on a little Yorkie. You can. Um, and you teach the dog how to pro do a proper heel. You can use a remote cow on a little Yorkie. The last thing you want to use probably is clicker and food um, at the beginning because it'll get too aroused. It'll get too aroused. Um, be careful about using high-pitched voices as well. You know, next. Will a dog pee in the house out of spite? You know, that's a really good question. And I think dogs pee because they're nervous. I think they pee because they're fearful. I think they pee because they're not housebroken. So that's about all I can give you on that. Next. Um, I'm thinking of having my dog trained. Oh, it's not broken. Um, my dog is really aggressive towards other dogs. So that's, that's a problem. We specialize in aggression rehab. So until you like, that's not, a, that's not, a, unfortunately, that's not like a periscope question. That's our specialty. So until you find somebody that can help you with that, keep your dog away from other dogs, keep your dog muzzled. And that doesn't answer the question. So, um, what you can do is, um, how to keep your dog from jacking off. Close the door when you do it. Dogs mirror their owners. Dogs mirror their owners. So close the freaking door. All right. Um, uh, so what you're gonna do, what you're gonna do is um, with aggression is keep your dog away from other dogs right now and start with basic obedience. Teach your dog what yes and no means. That's you. You need to do a Skype. Do it. You do a Skype next. My dog play bites yep. and hard. So we're again. So we're gonna do. Um, um, you, you have to do a punisher. Any, remember, any time you want to stop an unwanted behavior, there has to be a punisher. It's the only way to do it. A lot of times, people will say you don't have to do it; it makes it worse. No, it doesn't. We've done it with thousands of dogs. So anytime we want a dog to do something, we reward it. Anytime we want a dog to stop them something, um, we we would. Um, punish it. School of Mystery, I know they took away, I don't, I don't know if they took away gold. I think what happened was I was just on it. I was just on an RV trip for two months. I didn't do as many periscopes, so I didn't meet the qualifications. How many did I do? I don't know. How many did I do? I don't know. I, got, still gold. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Next. I don't know, School of Mystery. That's a really good question. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? To me, I don't really care about how many followers I have You've been or, or anything. About that I don't know. Yeah, oh exactly. Uh, my content sucks is why. That's what it really boils down to is my content sucks. That's why. All right, next. Okay. Keep going. Um, ba, ba, ba. Getting some good questions tonight. Missed watching these. Liking WWJD. Okay, thanks. thanks. Um, I, I don't think I'm being rude. I got 112 questions to go here. Okay? So be patient. It's free. It's free content. Okay, and I've got 5,000 videos that you can watch. I've got 10,000 hours of free audio content, and um, I've got a ton of stuff. I so just want to say one thing, too. Patient. If I see multiple questions that look almost exactly the same, I'm not answering yeah. every single one yeah. of them. Go back. We've been on this for an hour. I do this every week for free. Come on. Come on. I'm not being rude. I'm not being rude at all. How many other shows are out there? Seriously. How many other shows out there are there that you actually can get real advice to your dog training question. Come on, for free. Give me a break. I'm doing I'm I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can, guys. Okay? Next. 
Dogs on couches at train times, yes or no? Yeah, what you can do, what you can do is, what you can do is this, is with permission, yes. With permission, yes. So put a little blanket down, call your dog up, absolutely. But if your dog has any aggression issues, I don't suggest it. Anxiety issues, I don't suggest it. And if there's kids in the house, be really careful because the kid's head is where the um, um, the, the couch is usually. If there's a small toddler, next. Um, how do you get dogs to stop jumping up on you? I've got a video on YouTube that works. Go to my YouTube channel, just in my channel, which is Solid Canine Training, just in the search box, how to stop jumping, next. Will you be on Monday or Tuesday again? Um, we we try to do it on Monday. We try to do it on Monday next. Um, is using a water squirter a good punishment? Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. If it works for you, keep doing it. I'm just not a big fan of it. I'm just not a big fan of it. Just because uh, to me, it's like, to me, I don't mind that a dog sees that I'm punishing them. But for me, I just don't want to have to grab a squirt bottle and squirt it also you can't punish a dog from 10 yards away, from even five yards away. You can't punish a dog from a quarter mile away. You can't punish a dog in another room. You can't punish a dog, you know, um, through, a, uh, you know, anything like that with a water bottle. So next. Uh, how can I stop my dog from licking her feet? <laughs> um, I would check for, I would check the dog's diet first. See if the dog has any allergies. That's the route I would go. Next. What is your training or education and behavior and training? Usually people ask me that question because they want to bash me. So what you can do is you can go to my website, Solid Canine Training. Um, I have zero formal degrees in dog training because they're worthless. They're worthless. There is no certification out there that has got worth anything. So, you know, I've met many people with very high degrees in dog training that can't even train a dog basic command. So usually people ask me that question because they want to like say something rude to me or be, be mean to me. So if you want to know more about me, you can go to my social media channels. Um, but um, I don't need to take a take a test at all. So why do I, I think people want to bash me? Because probably because I've got a big mouth and I say it like it is. Um, um, well, then I have none. I have zero degrees. I have zero degrees other than I've been doing this for 12 years and I've trained thousands and thousands and thousands of dogs and I've documented my work and I'm the guy that's on the show right now. So that that you know that's it. But usually that's what people do. So, you know, next. You used to talk a lot about shock collars, but now bonkers. Is one better than the other? No, nope, they, they both have different purposes, and they both can be the same effective or or, 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 not, or not as effective. Next. My dog slept through most of this. I better let them watch the replay when they wake up. Definitely. Definitely. Next. Can't miss it. I think you said your son has petting time. Does that mean you don't believe in petting a dog a lot? No. I just, I just think that people over-pet their dogs. I'm just like... I, I, I am a big, we have to be super careful about children and dogs and children and dogs. We have to understand what pressure means. Um, um, uh, uh, you know, we have, we have, you know, pressure. So the pressure is, is a child walking up to a dog, a child walking up to a dog. And a lot of dogs don't like that, but I'm not against petting dogs at all. I'm against strangers petting your dog. I'm against strangers petting your dog, but I'm not against family members petting your dog, but you just have to, Oh, and shoot, it's 9.35 already. Um, I'm not against strangers petting. Um, I mean, I'm against strangers petting dogs. I'm not, I'm, I'm not against family members petting dogs, but you have to also respect the dog. Respect the dog. We deal with biting dogs all day long. All day long, we deal with biting dogs. So, so anyway, we've been on for over an hour. It's time for us to go. If you missed this, you can go back to the replay. As soon as I log off, um, um, what you can do um, is... is uh, Right, you're an animal behaviorist. All right. So anyway, so we're you know we're you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go right now. We've been up for over an hour. It's only supposed to be a one-hour show. So we went on a little bit longer because we had a lot of new people. All right, Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. You can go to our website, solidcanine-training.com. We've been an awesome facility up in Providence, um, Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, we we've got thousands of videos. There's over five thousand videos that we've got. Really, really great stuff. And um, take care and thanks for watching. Bye bye.